climate change is accelerating. The melting of the polar ice caps is exceeding predictions that even came from a year or two ago. Within 30 years, 25% of all species will be extinct. Our civilization, as we've constructed it, is completely unsustainable. I mean, it's very confusing because we're in this affluent society. If you live in the modern world or in New York, or you still have everything you could want. You know, the fish comes right to your plate and you can go and buy any fabric from any country in the world. It's very confusing to begin to read about the fact that there are these tremendous changes happening to the planet. What I began to come to in my research was this concept of time being really central to the whole crisis that we're in. And it's actually pretty interesting if you think about the metaphors we use when we talk about time. We talk about wasting time, spending time, having enough time, running out of time. Time is money. So we're constantly thinking about time as something spatial that's kind of ahead of us, that we can somehow reach out and grasp. And every time we try to grasp it, it's not there anymore. In a way, it's very ironic, because you think about the whole purpose of creating an industrial civilization and learning how to do all this stuff with technology and machines, you'd think it would be so that we could take it easy. It's almost like some strange uh, trick has been perpetrated upon us. The modern way of thinking about indigenous tribal cultures is that they were myth-based and superstitious. And it, it may be that cultures like the Mayans and other indigenous cultures did have their own knowledge system that was as meaningful as ours, but they were just interested in very different aspects of reality, different aspects of being and experience. I'd started as a secular materialist person coming out of a whole like Freudian, Newtonian, Cartesian paradigm. I began to accept that there was this whole dimension of the psyche that my world had negated and neglected to explore and to think about. You can demonstrate quantitatively and statistically that the biosphere is in terrible shape. You can demonstrate qualitatively and statistically that our technology is continuing to accelerate and change our possibility. And this third aspect is about the psychic evolution. This is something that can't be quantified or understood statistically. So somebody who has just a rational scientific mind is going to find it very hard to accept that there's some kind of change happening in the nature of the psyche. In my own life and in the lives of many people that I'm connected with, there seems to be an incredible upsurge of uh, synchronicities. So if you begin to have an intention about something, you can get a quicker level of manifestation. It's almost as if the boundary between the psychic and the physical is becoming thinner. It's becoming more permeable. It's becoming subtler. The thesis that I ended up developing in my book, and I'm continuing to develop in my writing, is that we're on the cusp of a breakthrough into a new form or new level of human consciousness. And the way that I've come to see this period leading up to 2012 is a kind of a window of opportunity to catalyze transformation in global consciousness. We have a lot of fundamentalists in the U.S. who are actually thinking about the rapture and Armageddon, but they're sort of seeing it in this very literalist and negativistic way. The apocalypse does actually literally mean like revealing or uncovering. So rather than being destructive, it's a time when everything hidden becomes revealed and available. So this apocalyptic process would be the coming of the self into conscious realization. A lot of people, when they're confronted with this whole 2012 paradigm, they can lapse into kind of passivity. It's almost been like, oh, if you just like trip, or you just like get into the mind calendar, or every now and then participate in a shamanic session, you're going to be okay. You're going to be like, quote unquote, saved when shit and fan uh, meet each other. Uh, the way I look at it is totally different. I think that the shift is really about the individual taking responsibility for the whole planetary situation and actually reorienting their psychic energy towards the positive process of transformation.
The philosopher Nietzsche talked about how the deed creates the doer, almost as an afterthought. So it's actually by dealing with the situation that humanity has unleashed on the planet that we create this next level of consciousness. And if we don't do that, I think we're going to be in very bad shape. How do we move towards a sustainable planetary civilization in a short period of time? And how do we make something positive and transformative out of it?